Hey guys, welcome to the Artist Server. So, a couple weeks ago, I made a video showing you guys the compatibility of 4KN drives with the LSI controllers, and we pretty much found no problems uh, in that video. Now, there were a couple people who commented in that video uh, that were still having problems with their 4KN drives. And there was also a question about whether um, the 4KN drive will work through a SAS expander. And so today's video is basically a follow-up to that. And um, I'm going to try to answer those questions for you. So in today's setup, we have one HBA card right here that is connected to an expander. And I've got one cable connected to the, the four bays that are empty right here. I'm going to plug in this 4KN drive into one of those bays and then we'll log into the system and uh, verify that we can actually see the full capacity of this eight terabyte drive. After that, there was another uh, person who was struggling with a 4KN drive inside a R720 XD. And uh, with one of my uh, IT mode uh, mini monolithic cards. And so I'm going to also uh, to put this drive in the R720 XD that I have that has uh, one of my H710 uh, mini uh, cards with the IT mode um, firmware. And we'll verify that that uh, works as well. So let's get started with this one. I'll just go ahead and put this in the front bay. And we'll let that spin up. Uh, I'm gonna get on the uh, Java console and uh, we'll verify that this actually uh, works in the setup through the expander. All right. All right, guys, so here I am on the uh, Java KVM application to that server. And let's just run LSCSI first, just to see um, if we see all the devices. Okay, so there is that Hitachi drive that we just put in, the eight terabytes, so it's the 728080. That's the eight terabyte drive. It's showing up as SDB. And you also see that the IBM uh, SAS2 expander is here with the uh, 634A firmware. Okay, so let's, we know the drive shows up here. Let's uh, run parted on, and this, I'm just gonna repeat basically the same steps that we did in that initial 4KN compatibility video. All right, so um, right now it does seem to show that it, it's uh, an eight terabyte drive. It's got the full capacity, but um, like in the previous video, I'm gonna go ahead and just redo all this. So we'll recreate the GPT label on this, uh, which will just destroy the partition table. And now we have no partitions. And so um, we're gonna try to create um, a partition right now. And I'll start at 0% to 100%. Okay, and so it's able to create that full eight uh, terabyte partition. Uh, let's go ahead and get out of this. And I'm going to make, well, let's see. We should, oops. Yeah, so we have SDB1, which is that one partition that covers the entire drive. Um, let's go ahead and make a file system on it and mount it. So let's see how this goes. All right, so file system is done. Uh, let's go ahead and mount this. And Indeed, we see the 7.3 terabyte, which is the basically the 8 terabyte drive. So yeah, um, at least through this uh, SAS2 IBM expander with a uh, that the card, the HBA card that's in there right now is the 9248i, which is based on the SAS 2008. So that's like the oldest um, SAS2 uh, LSI chipset uh, that I, that I have here. And so even with that. Uh, old controller and the SAS2 expander, we're perfectly able to see the full um, eight terabytes of this 4KN drive. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and unmount this and let's go put this in the Dell R720 XD that also has an expander backplane, um, but it has uh, one of my uh, H710 mini monolithic cards that uh, is flashed to IT mode. All right. All right, guys, so here is the R720 XD. I vacated one of the drives that is normally in here. And uh, off camera, I swapped that 4KN drive into the Dell drive tray here. So hopefully you can see this. Uh, let's see here. 
So that's the 4KN drive, the 8TB Hitachi drive that uh, we just finished testing in the Super Micro system. And now we're going to plug it into the Dell R720 XD, which also has a SAS 2 expander backplane uh, with one of the uh, H710 Mini with IT mode firmware. So I'm going to go ahead and plug this guy in. And we'll let that spin up and get on the iDRAC uh, console and see if we see the full capacity of that drive. And we'll do the same thing where we reformat, uh, recreate the GPT partition, reformat it, and we'll mount it and just verify that it works. All right. Hey guys, just wanted to show you something that I thought was kind of interesting. And I just kind of noticed this. So this is the R720 XD and it's got 12 hard drives in here. Now, originally um, I had SATA Hitachi drives in here and you can see that all the um, LEDs are off. Now, when there is activity, the bottom LED will flicker. And so the activity LED still works. The top LED, which normally um, with a normal Dell monolithic card would be on, uh, would be green basically when there's a hard drive uh, spinning in there. Um, with the IT mode version of the mini, mini cards, that light does not turn on. And so that's something that I, I know you, a lot of you guys have noticed and have messaged me about, and um, we've talked about that in the past. It's just that the LSI firmware doesn't work that well with this backplane in terms of uh, activating the status LED. But the activity LED always uh, has never had a problem working. Now, what's interesting is these were all SATA drives and uh, I just swapped this bay here, this, this last one here with the 4KN drive, um, which is an eight terabyte SAS drive. And the activity LED, uh, it does flicker when there's activity, but uh, its default state is to be uh, on. So that's kind of an interesting observation. So I, I suspect if these were all SAS drives, the activ activity LED would constantly be on and would flicker with activity. Uh, whereas SATA drives, the activity LED seems to be off and flickers with activity. So that is kind of an interesting difference and uh, I'm not really sure why that is. Uh, I've seen similar types of behavior like this uh, with uh, super micro backplanes as well. Uh, with regards to the uh, slightly different behavior of the activity LED when it comes to SATA versus SAS hard drives. So anyway, I just thought that's kind of an interesting observation. I just noticed this uh, when I was testing out the 4KN drive uh, in this uh, R720 XD. And so I thought I'd just make a short clip here uh, to share that with you guys. Um, but otherwise, uh, the activity LEDs all work, uh, SATA or SAS. Uh, they do flicker when there is drive activity. Uh, the status LED, um, this again has the IT mode uh, mini monolithic card and the status uh, LED uh, doesn't seem to work uh, the way you normally have it when you have a Dell firmware card. All right, just wanted to share that with you. Okay guys, um, this is the iDRAC uh, Java KVM on the R720 XD where we just plugged in a 4KN 8TB uh, Hitachi drive. So let's see what we got. Uh, let's start with LS SCSI. And you'll see that the uh, other uh, SATA drives are there, but the last one here is our eight terabyte drive. So it's showing up as drive uh, SDM. And this is the 72880, so that's the eight terabyte Hitachi uh, SAS drive. All right, so uh, that being SDM, let's run parted on it. And you can see that this is in fact sector size logical and physical is 4K 4K. Um, I didn't point this out in the um, in the super micro system uh, in the just the previous test just now. But if I think if you go back to the video, you'll see the same thing. So that just verifies that this really is a 4K N drive. Both physical and logical are uh, 4K basically. And so let's just go through the same routine again. Um, let's uh, recreate the GPT table. And so that'll just blow away everything we just previously did. And uh, let's go ahead and make that partition again, starting from 0% to 100% and see what we get. All right, so it looks like it created the partition uh, across the entire eight terabytes of that drive again. 
So we'll go ahead and quit. And we should now uh, see uh, SDM1, which is the, uh, the first partition that covers the whole drive, right? All right, let's go ahead and create a file system on this. Okay, and let's go ahead and mount it and see what we got. Okay, so I, st I mounted it on slash MTN and you can see for uh, 7.3 terabytes. So that's basically the entire eight terabyte drive. So yeah, um, this is with the R720 XT, which also has an expander. Uh, this expander behaves a little bit differently. So unlike the IBM expander, if you do LS SCSI, it doesn't really show the expander here at all. But um, if you go through the logs, so let's, let me show you something here. By the way, um, this is just a little tip for you guys. Uh, if you're on a Linux system and you're trying, you know, the Linux system logs all sorts of stuff, right? And if you have a really busy server, you're gonna have logs with all sorts of other activity going on. Um, but if you're primarily troubleshooting a, um, a LSI card, um, IO, you know, related thing, you wanna see if there's a problem with the driver, you wanna see what's going on at the SCSI layer, you wanna see what's going on at the, the device layer, all that stuff. This is kind of a nice little command that picks up all those messages out of the logs. So I'm running D message just to see all the kernel messages and I'm looking for anything that starts uh, or has MPT2, which is the driver here. Uh, if you have a newer card, it might be MPT3. So you can modify that or just add that to the list. Um, so it's, it looks for MPT2 or SCSI or uh, space SD space. And that usually captures log messages pertaining to uh, the SCSI devices that are uh, showing up. So uh, let me pipe this into more or actually let's do less. Um, because there's going to be quite a few messages, but this will usually capture most of the messages you'll be interested in. So you'll see some SCSI host related things to the USB drive and all that stuff. And that's fine. Um, like I said, that command will capture a lot of all the stuff, all the storage related things. Um, we have MPT2 SAS, which is the driver. And so we have all the messages uh, pertaining to the driver of that card. Um, you'll also see the version of the driver that's loading. So I'll kind of scroll down a little bit here. Uh, let's see what else here. And so, okay, so here is a LSI SAS 2308 uh, uh, controller that's connected to the MPT2 SAS underscore CM0 instance of the driver. This is the firmware version on it and the chip ver revision and the BIOS version, all that information. And you'll see that it says uh, sending port enabled. So that's just basically turning on the card. And uh, here is the evidence of the expander. So you'll see that uh, once that card turns on, it says expander add. And so uh, basically it's detecting that there's an expander uh, connected to that uh, LSI controller, which is, this is by the way, the H710 with the uh, 2308 IT mode firmware on it. Okay, so this is the IT, uh, H710 with IT mode that I sell in my store. And this is uh, right now installed in my seven, sorry, R seven twenty XD, which is a twelve bay uh, three and a half inch backplane. And you'll see uh, after that the SCSI layer starts showing uh, all the uh, drives that are connected to it, and these are all Hitachi SATA drives. And you'll see that uh, it also identifies the slot and uh, enclosure ID basically. So again, this is because uh, this is on a, a, an expander uh, on that server. So we'll go ahead and scroll through all that. And then you'll see uh, SD, at, at the SD layer, uh, the drives start showing up as SDB, SDC, SDE, and so on and so forth. And I'll just kind of scroll through all this because there's um, a lot of drives in there. And then this is a lot, the messages uh, that we just saw um, from inserting the 4KN drive. So at the SCSI layer, uh, you'll see direct access to uh, Hitachi uh, 72880 drive, right? So that's that address. Um, and that is in slot two um, and then the Q depth and all the other information about that. And then you'll see that it's spinning up the drive and it's now connecting uh, as SDM. So attached SCSI disk at, uh, as SDM. So anyway, um, I just want to show you guys that as a little tip of, you know, how to 
uh, filter through the log messages when you're just troubleshooting storage related issues you know that command uh, will filter out a lot of the other stuff you might not uh, care to see and, and if you have a really busy server um, there, there could be a lot of information in the logs and and this is just a quick way to kind of pull out the the stuff that's probably most interesting to you if you're trying to troubleshoot a storage related problem but uh, also that uh, shows you that this does in fact have a SAS expander and that we're not having any problems seeing the full uh, eight terabytes of this drive, uh, this 4KN drive, even with the SAS, the Dell SAS expander between the IT mode uh, H720, uh, H710 controller and this Hitachi uh, eight terabyte 4KN drive. So uh, anyway, so that's, I guess that's good news right uh, that we've basically verified that at least the Dell expander and that IBM ex expander um, doesn't interfere with the usability of the 4kn drives with those LSI controllers now what's probably unfortunate here is that I know uh, I'm doing this video because some of you have asked this question after I released the, the first 4kn uh, compatibility video and you were still having some problems uh, with your 4KN drive. Uh, I think one individual was asking about it in their R720 XD. So unfortunately, uh, I don't know what's going on there. Uh, in my case, with this 4KN drive, with my um, H710 with IT mode controller, I'm not really having any problems. Um, in addition, um, I wanted to test this out also with that IBM expander and then there I'm also not having any problems and I know that the SAS 2008 controller can handle the 4K and drive without any issues. Um, so now I'm not I'm not testing on the R720 XD, I'm not testing the H310 uh, Mini with IT mode. Um, I just didn't happen to have that in there right now. So I suppose I could do that but honestly uh, since in the previous test with on the Super Micro system with the H um, sorry, that was a 9248i. That is a SAS 2008 chipset uh, with the IBM expander, and that didn't present any problems with the 4KN drive either. So I suspect um, that uh, even if I did put an H310 mini with IT mode in this R720 XD, I'm not going to have any problems. You know, so I mean, if you guys really want me to verify that, I, I of course I could always try to do that. But honestly, um, it worked in the Super Micro. The SAS 2008 worked in the Super Micro um, with the SAS expander with the 4KN drive. Uh, I don't see a reason why it wouldn't work here. And you know, and, but anyway, it, it works here uh, with the H710 with IT mode uh, for sure, as you just saw. So anyway, um, yeah. So the unfortunate thing is, I really can't explain to you why. Um, some of those other people who were commenting in the other video uh, were still having problems with their 4KN drive. I don't think it has anything to do with the IT mode um, controllers uh, that I sell. I don't think it has anything to do with the SAS expanders. And so, um, yeah, the unfortunate thing is that means that we still don't know why. And um, yeah, I mean, I guess maybe one has to dig into it a little bit more uh, in that case. but. Uh, at least in the scenarios I just showed you, uh, 4KN drive compatibility seems to be good, uh, seems to not be a problem. So anyway, I hope you guys like this. I hope this is going to be hel uh, helpful to you guys. If you're uh, concerned about the 4KN drive um, compatibility with LSI controllers, um, if you're just uh, seeing this video for the first time and you didn't see the previous video, I highly recommend you go back and uh, check out that other video. I'll leave a link to that here. Um, so you can see the uh, 4KN drive compatibility, the, the first segment um, for the 4KN drive compatibility video that I made. So I think uh, in that video I tested uh, the, the compatibility of 4KN drives with four generations of uh, LSI controllers and um, you know the short of it is that none of them showed a problem. So anyway, uh, just want to share that with you guys. I uh, hope you liked it. Please give me a like if you like this video and be sure to subscribe if you want to see more videos from me. All right. Thanks a lot, guys. Bye-bye.